There he is. Andy, welcome. So Andy, you have about um, you have about 300 people here in New York watching, uh, and then uh, the live audience as well, which is watching uh, via Fora TV. So um, thank you very much for joining our, our health conference. Um, how are things? How are things in uh, the valley? Well, before I report on that, I was wondering if you got any thoughts about applying the teacher qualification that is coming to elementary schools and apply it to people who go to conferences on any of the new subjects like big data before they leave, give them a test. <laughs> we, we certainly should, especially since it is a conference about numbers. So yeah, that's a great idea. That is, there, there will be a pop quiz at the end. Excellent. Uh, so, so Andy, I don't know, people here probably don't know, but um, the, the reason we, we were able to um, kind of join forces with you on this was because uh, in the issue of Wired that's going to be on the stands next week, it's appearing in mailboxes now, you, you have an essay that you wrote, a, a um, manifesto in, of sorts, like a call to arms for uh, reform in the healthcare uh, industry. And you call for not, not radical transparency, but just some amount of transparency on, on price, um, first of all. So uh, that, that story is, is live today on, on Wired.com on our website. Um, but I just wanted to maybe start off by, by lettering, letting you channel the, uh, the vitriol that you had in the, in the essay and, and kind of let our audience here know about what, um, what your idea is for, for healthcare. If there was vitriol in it, it was very dilute. <laughs> um, it has taken me quite a number of exposures to realize that any bill, charge, or any financial uh, action taken toward me as an individual was never anything like what it said on that paper. And I started asking questions about it. I have friends in the healthcare business and they are prominent professors. But I asked the question, do you understand what your charges mean? But this is not hospitalization. This is like a diagnostic test. No. How could I? The same people are devoted to lowering the cost of medical care. Picture this. In my prior life, I was spent manufacturing chips, investing money in equipment processes to lower the cost of those chips or increase the performance of it. And picture the scene that somebody would come to me, <clears throat> we need to have deep UV in photolithography and all it costs is $200 million in development and about $30 million a machine. And I would say, how do you know? And I would get a look ranging from why do you ask such a stupid question or trust me <laughs> or none of those because I would be too chicken to ask the question. What impact would it have had this kind of behavior on the chip industry? Conversely, how can we go after medical costs when 
in a particular situation, we try to find a cost analysis course common between University of California, Berkeley, and UCSF. You're and we could not find such a course. This is part of your trans the translational medicine program that you've sponsored? Yes. And so there's no... There's no modest way to plug this off. Right, and then there's no effort to, to promote transparency even, even in that forum. Well, if you are a professor, and you have a choice of teaching something that has textbooks, exercises, residence training modules, or have none of those things, what are you going to teach? It's a reinforcing of teaching what we have no measures of. More importantly, no understanding. And even more importantly, I am suspicious that the situation prevails because it is in the commercial interest of members of the healthcare community. So this is, you, you do mention in the, um, in the essay that you wrote about the, your concern about uh, the insurers and the consolidation in the, in the, among insurers that is, is actually going the opposite way from transparency. They have, they have less and less interest in sharing uh, what costs are as they, as they become larger players and consolidation. Is that, is that put your point? Is that There's several point? points. First of all, the consolidation toward larger players is of significant concern in most industries. The U.S. government has laws that they execute in the form of the Justice Department or the FTC. I have a personal experience in that. And that, those laws got lobbied out of the federal domain. States can do them. The federal government cannot apply antitrust laws against national companies. In, in health Pardon? In, in health Yeah. So you start consolidation with our checks The relevant information is considered trade secret. No commercial company is going to take on other commercial companies in this. So it is left to the educational institutions, most of which are struggling to take one more breath of air. We are in bad shape. So do you think the, the motivation then to do this is, is, if it's not coming from the insurers, it, it's, it's not the, the uh, universities, hospital systems have less time and resources to do it. Where, where does the motivation to create transparency, price transparency, come from? From you and I, if we get su sufficiently pissed. This is your... This is your um, this is the equation you talk about, the, the reform, you, you spelled this out for me previously, the, that reform equals uh, transparency plus white hot anger. Um, and that we, I mean, you really do feel, feel like it, it requires ordinary people just to get really angry about not having, uh, having enough knowledge about what their own costs are incurring, or what costs they are incurring. They don't know how to channel that anger. Uh, and by the way of this, something that annoys me in this, that people talk about we need more patient involvement. <clears throat> you know the joke about 
the chicken is involved in an omelet. <laughs> that, whereas the pig had a medical exam. So, so, um, so I want to, I want to, so given, given your call to transparency, I want to put your, I want to put your uh, enthusiasm, your passion for healthcare in, in context. So, so pr most people probably know, um, but, but maybe it's not, not apparent that they, you've actually been involved in medicine and healthcare for, for going on 20 years, going back to your, your uh, funding of prostate research and, and Parkinson's research, the, um, the UCSF program, UCSF, UC Berkeley program that you're doing now. This is, a, this is actually an, a, an industry that you've been, you've had this, this frustration and anger about, about how healthcare is conducted for a long time. I felt like any soldier who's drafted and is sent back into another mission. I would love to get out of it. <laughs> battle fatigue. That's right. But battle anger too. Uh, because it's not that these fields are different. It is that these fields are pursued very similarly. Mm -hmm. And since uh, both of them in allow me to go close to the front line, close to the investigators, we can speak sometimes the same language. I learn all this. And I learned that they are equally frustrated, equally uncomprehending of what is happening. So they throw up their hands and look at the patient and do a magnificent job. The fact that I'm here to talk to you like that is a result of a number of very diligent and capable people doing that. And not one of those would say, take Andy away, he's too much trouble, give me my bill. And I interpret it for you. Well, now you, you've, so you, you've been trying to, I mean, you're, whenever you, all of your interest is, is uh, oftentimes in this, this uh, environment of reform. So you were trying to change the way research, or you have been trying to change the way uh, research is done into, into prostate and Parkinson's disease. You've been, you've been active in trying to change the way that, that drug delivery and drug, drug research is done. Um, do you, when, you, when, you, when you put your finger and you put your mind to one of these areas, do you, do you feel like you've had a, an influence? Do you feel like there's been progress in these areas so far? Actually, yes. How so? I, uh, the two that are re most relevant and most close in time, uh, the way potential new treatments of Parkinson's and other brain uh, degenerative diseases could be mm -hmm. is local introduction to the locus of the damage of a drug typically conceived to be a protein growth factor and sort of pump that substance in the vicinity that the damage is. Now the only problem is the brain is not a homogeneous material that most of the experiments have been done. The flow, the fluid out of the little pipe can be uneven. But the most important one is there are blood vessels all over the brain. And if you go near the blood vessel and the flow comes in, the blood vessel is going to lead the flow away. 
from where you want it to where you don't want it. Experimentation was only possible after MRI allowed real time to examine what is happening. So we were a participant in a small group, small number of groups that did work on this one and I'm pretty proud of what we had done. The second one is simpler. Parkinson's is a movement disorder, as are several other diseases. And the rating that is as necessary for a patient as your test on big data is for the audience needs to be made objective. Common way today is give your hand, turn it up, up and down a number of times, look at your facial expression, unstructured data, that's a common comment, and it's very inaccurate. Right. So we have worked for, I'm embarrassed to say, eight years and developed an instrument that measures the irregularities of the movement of the hand or the body. So at least one uncertainty, the doctor or nurse rating is removed. This has been a lot of work, and some of the work was because we never worked in medical, my colleagues and I never worked in medical fields together, just a bunch of engineers. And some of it, it was physically hard. But those are two that we managed to wrestle into almost usefulness. Right. Well, so, so those two, it's interesting because those two examples are so data intensive and so, so such complicated science. And, and, um, and I know those efforts both continue, but this idea, this idea that, that you ha have in, in the, um, the Wired story is, is uh, you know, one of the simplest data points, right? It's very basic. It's just dollars and cents, just trying to make that piece of data, that one piece of data transparent to people. And I, I, I'm, I wonder if you think that that, um, that simplicity is, is uh, kind of whether it, it, it uh, is, is deceiving in how, simplicity, in how simple or apparently simple it might be. Is that, in fact, more complicated problem, do you think, than, uh, than drug delivery or, or some of these research questions? If I get a bill that says, we charge you $100,000, but since you are a very nice guy, you look good in your blue shirt, or maybe I don't give you a reason, I give you a $90,000 relief. So you, are, you owe me $10,000. You have no idea what happened. But if you got $90,000, you got to run down in the street and incite everybody who has got $90,000 that they thought they owed and invite them to the barricades, it will be lonely. <laughs> so what do you do? Shrug. And that shrug enables the continuation of the economic behavior of this industry. Well, Andy, I, I think it's a it's a wonderful um, it's 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 wonderful, and healthcare is very fortunate to have your your clarity of, of intellect and your uh, your dedication to the to these causes. So I want to thank you, and and on behalf of everybody here, thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate it.